When it comes to racing sims, it doesn't get much more classic than this. This is Pole Position, developed by Namco. So after their recent successes with games like Galaga and Rally X and, I don't know, maybe you've heard of Pac-Man, Namco would try their hand at some F1 racing action by releasing this into arcades in 1982. Before its time, this game looked pretty amazing, and thanks to its popularity, this game can also be credited for setting a lot of standards in the racing game genre. With its 3D-esque perspective, the rear view of the car, scaling sprites for other incoming cars and objects on the horizon, and a vanishing point that matches your steering. Now, it wasn't necessarily the first racing game to utilize these things, but it was still a landmark combination of technological advancements in gaming, and then it went on to be ported to many home computers and consoles, and still lives on today with its inclusion on several Namco compilations, plug-and-play TV games like you're watching in this video, or even for iOS devices. But of course, it's not just the mind-blowing graphics for the time that make this game a classic, as there's definitely some awesome racing gameplay to be had here. Beyond the typical steering and acceleration controls, you can also switch between low and high gears. And then the main challenge comes from trying to finish the race in the allotted time, along with avoiding collisions with other cars and advertising billboards that litter the many curves in the course. I guess if I ever wanted to crash my car into something, it might as well be an advertisement for Xevious. Although, speaking of advertising, this was interestingly enough one of the earlier examples of product placement in a video game, although don't expect to find any of the Martini and Rossi billboards in the home versions. Uh, and from what I can see, this TV games version only has ads for the other games included in that hardware, which is probably for licensing reasons. But other than that, this is a pretty faithful port if you don't mind using a twisting joystick instead of a steering wheel. But man, the original arcade cabinet was pretty awesome, especially the sit-down ones, so that's by far the best way to play this game. And so as this game reaches its 30th birthday, it might not have the depth of modern F1 sims, but it still definitely oozes charm, and it's undeniably a nostalgic gem and an important piece of arcade gaming history. Prepare to qualify.